This video is to help you find the missing sides of triangles using the trig function sine, cosine, and tangent. So at this point um, in our unit on right triangle trigonometry, your geometry teacher has given you some overview, some spiel um, about what we use sine, cosine, and tangent for and what they are and how we define them. So these are the notes that I gave to my students. Um, simply put, the sine, cosine, and tangent are functions that we use to help us find missing sides of triangles when we have a right triangle um, for right triangle trigonometry and at least one angle besides the 90 degree angle and one side of the triangle are given. So if we have that information then we can actually figure out every other part of the triangle using our trig functions. So the sine, the cosine, and the tangent are defined as I have them written here. So if this is my angle theta, and remember theta, uh, if your teacher has or hasn't introduced you to that, it is just a Greek letter that we use as a variable for angles. It's pronounced theta. Um, so that's a common variable that you'll see. You'll also see x, y, z, and all the other letters of the alphabet. So this is just a variable that represents the angle measure. So for this angle theta, if I were to draw an arrow straight out from that, the side of the triangle that it would hit would be the opposite side, which in this triangle I have labeled as little b. So big B would be the angle, that angle theta, and little b would be the side opposite to it. Um, also, the side that is touching this angle theta, the one that is right next to that angle, is called the adjacent side. So adjacent means next to, so the adjacent side of the right triangle is the side that is touching the angle that we are looking at. The hypotenuse remains the same. The hypotenuse of a right triangle is always the side, it's the longest side of the right triangle, and it's always the side that's opposite the 90 degree angle, and that will not change. However, depending on where this angle is, um, will determine if it's the opposite side or the adjacent side of the triangle. So once you have your triangle labeled with the opposite, adjacent, opposite and adjacent sides and hypotenuse, then um, solving the problem from there is just a matter of plugging it into the right trig equation and using a little bit of algebra to solve for your variable. And that's what we're going to do here. Okay, so there's our brief overview. Um, another thing that you may have learned at this point is our mnemonic device for remembering how to define the three primary trig functions. So this is SOHCAHTOA. It's uh, a simple way to remember that the sine of an angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse opposite side of the hypotenuse, the cosine of an angle is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, and the tangent of an angle is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So this is SOHCAHTOA. Um, there's lots of different ways to remember it, but SOHCAHTOA is probably one of the most common ways to remember that information. So this part you have to commit to memory, as well as how to accurately uh, label the opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse on your triangle. So I have a mishmash of problems here, and we're just going to solve them one at a time. So on each of these problems, I'm just going to be looking for x, solving for my variable, and I'm going to use one of those three trig functions in order to find it. I'll also show you how to plug it into a couple different calculators. I have the TI30X2, um, which is nice. Um, this is a calculator that a lot of you guys have at home, and it's, it's great. You can use it in class. That's fine. Uh, for our um, school, we have to use this calculator in class, and this is the calculator that everyone's given um, for most of our testing, so I'll show you how to plug it into that one as well. A couple of things that are in a different order, um, and I'll show you how to use your calculator. All right, so here's my problem. I need to solve for x, and I'm going to be using trigonometry to do that. So first thing I want to do um, is I'm going to label my the sides of my triangle. So let me just grab a different color here. Um, let's go with orange. Okay. So the angle that's given, this is of course a right triangle, I can see that, and the angle that's given to me here is 37 degrees. So this is my reference angle. So if I were to draw an arrow or a line shooting out straight from that angle, the side that it hits is going to be the opposite side. So I'm going to put OPP for opposite, or you can just put O. The side, the other leg of the right triangle, or the side that's touching that angle right here, has to be the adjacent side, 
Now some of you might be saying, well, wait a second, this side is also touching that, that angle. And you're right, it is touching that angle. However, that side is the hypotenuse because it's the side that is across from the 90 degree angle. So this is the hypotenuse. So therefore, it can't be the, we can't label it as the adjacent side. So when you have your triangle, always as a first step, label the opposite side, the adjacent side, and the hypotenuse. The opposite side is the side that's straight across from your angle. The adjacent side is the side that's touching the angle, that's also helping to form the 90 degree angle. And the hypotenuse is the side that's completely um, across from the 90 degree angle, or it's not touching the little right angle symbol here. You can kind of see that from your picture. So, now I have to ask myself, um, using my, my three trig functions, which trig function relates an angle to its opposite side and the adjacent side? Because that's what's given here. They don't give me any information whatsoever for the hypotenuse, so I'm not going to be using the hypotenuse in this example. I have to find a trig function that relates an angle to its opposite side and its adjacent side. So if I go back to my little cheat sheet here, the sine function has opposite and hypotenuse, the cosine function has adjacent and hypotenuse, tangent has opposite and adjacent. So because these are the two sides that are given to me to work within the problem, this is the trig function that I'm going to use to finish solving this triangle. So let's go ahead and set up our equation to solve for x. So based on what I have here, I can say that the tangent of 37 degrees is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, which in this case is going to be 12 divided by x, okay? So there's my equation. So I've got one variable, I've got one equation, I can solve from here. So now, let's zoom in on our equation. What I like to do with my students, especially because we just finished a unit um, solving a bunch of proportions, is I like to turn these into proportions. But however, whatever legal algebra moves you want to use, you can. You know, a lot of people, after they do these problems, they find shortcuts, that's fine. I'm just showing you with proportions because that's what works for my kids. So because we have a proportion, we can go ahead and use a cross product property or just cross multiply. So I'm going to multiply the expressions that are diagonal from each other and solve whatever equation results from there. So I'm going to put that uh, x times the tangent of 37 degrees is equal to 12. So I multiplied this diagonal and got x times tangent of 37. I multiplied this diagonal and I got 12, right? So now from here, I need to get x by itself. So this notation right here, some students find very intimidating. The tangent of 37 degrees is just a number. The tangent is a function, but because we've got a value plugged in there and not a variable, now this really is just like any other constant. It's like x times 12 or x times 3 or x times negative 1. Okay, it's just a number that's being multiplied by the x. So the way that we undo multiplying, is by dividing. So we're treating this just like a number because that's what it is. So if I divide both sides by the tangent of 37 degrees, those reduce and I'm left with this. x equals 12 divided by the tangent of 37 degrees. So this would be my exact answer right here this is my exact answer, um, but a lot of times you'll have to round. So just for practice, let's say that we had to round to one decimal for these problems. We're going to go ahead and plug this into our calculator, right? So I've got one calculator here. This is um, a standard scientific calculator that a lot of you already have at home, which is fine. So the nice thing about this calculator is that you plug things in the way you write them on your paper, which I love. It's very easy to use. And actually, let me go ahead and zoom in closer on that screen. 
right? So I'm going to type in 12, hit the division bar, and I'm going to divide that by the tangent of 37. And then you can see the little DEG there. That means that my calculator is set to degrees. So you always want to make sure of that. So if I hit enter, it gives me my answer. So if I round that to one decimal place, that's going to be 15.9 units. They don't give me any units in this problem, so we'll just leave it as 15.9. Right? So here are answers here. So an exact answer, you would leave it like this. And if uh, they asked you to approximate to one or two decimal places, then you would plug it into your calculator and go from there. So that's using the one scientific calculator. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys on the other one that I have here, the TI-30XA. So this one, you have to do it one step at a time. So it's, it's similar, except for the way that we do the tangent is actually backwards. You hit the order, uh, the buttons in the opposite order. So I'm going to type in 12 divided by 37, and then I'm going to hit tangent, and then I'm going to press enter. And you guys can see that we get the same answer, regardless of which calculator we use. So just to show you guys side by side, okay? Um, you get the same answer regardless, and if you round, um, it'll be the same. So that's how you type that into those two different calculators, all right? And that's that particular example. So in that one, we use the tangent because we had the opposite side and the adjacent side. So let's try one that is um, different from the tangent. So I'm just peeking at my examples here. So let's do this one. Right? So I have another right triangle. I have my angle and I have the other two um, pieces of information there. They give me two, two sides to work with. One of them we don't know. It's X. So again, I'm going to label my opposite side. So this is the opposite side which means that this side here is the adjacent side because it's touching the angle. And again, this one is touching the angle, but that's the hypotenuse because it's opposite from the 90 degree angle. It's, it's across from the 90 degree angle. So for this particular example, if my angle that I'm looking at is 18 degrees, X would be my opposite side, 20 is my hypotenuse, and this other side over here is the adjacent side, but they don't give us any information to work with, so we're not going to pay attention to that side right now. So what I have to ask myself is, which one of my trig functions, meaning which one of these, relates an angle to its opposite side and its hypotenuse? All right. So if you look at how we define our trig functions, the one that we want to use here is the sine function because I see opposite and hypotenuse, and in my problem, I'm given the opposite side and the hypotenuse to work with, all right? So that's what we're going to use to set up our problem here. So that means that we want to say that the sine of 18 degrees is equal to the opposite side, which here is x, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 20. Okay, so there's our problem. So just like I did on the last example, I'm going to go ahead and turn this into a proportion. I'm going to cross multiply. And when I do that, I get x equals, x times 1 is x, 20 times the sine of 18 degrees, right? So this one is, is a one uh, less step um, algebraically or, you know, as far as solving the equation goes because the variable's in the numerator here. When the variable's in the denominator, you have to um, do an additional step like we did on the last one. But either way, the proportion works. So this would be our exact answer. So now all we have to do is type it into our calculator and simplify. And because this is a slightly different setup, I'll go ahead and show you with both calculators again. So if I want to plug this into this calculator, which again is a little, little more user friendly because you just type it in the way that it is on your paper. So I'm going to type in 20 times um, the sine of 18. And again, my calculator is set to degrees. So I'm going to hit enter. And there's my answer, so I would round that. If I was rounding that to the nearest tenth, which is one decimal place, this would be 6.2.
and if I wanted to do that exact same problem using my other scientific calculator, I would go ahead and do, put that back up there, I would go ahead and type in 18 first, then punch in the sign, or, or hit the sign button. So that's the sign of 18 degrees, but then I have to multiply it by 20, and there's my answer, okay? And then, did I hit enter on that one? 18 sign, and then times 20, enter, okay, good. So uh, there's how we plug those in. You can see you get the same answer regardless of which calculator you have, and our answer is going to be 6.2. So here's my answer. So with these problems, what you're doing is labeling your triangle. I can't stress that enough. That's, that's always going to be the first step is label your opposite side, your hypotenuse, and your adjacent side. Then looking at the angle that's given, which two sides do you have to work with? Do you have the opposite side and the adjacent side, the adjacent side and the hypotenuse? Because that dictates which one of our three trig functions you use to set up an equation and solve. Right? So I'm going to work through a few more examples. Let's see here. Let me grab another one of these over here. Let's do this one. All right? So here's my picture. So I've got an angle, right triangle, with my angle of 44 degrees. So if I draw a line straight out from my angle, the side that it hits is going to be the opposite side the side that that angle is touching, the other leg of the triangle and where that angle is touching has to be the adjacent side. And then of course my hypotenuse is always the side opposite the 90 degree angle. So that's how I would label the parts of the triangle. And I'm not given, I'm not given anything in terms of the opposite side of my triangle. So I'm just going to ignore that part right now and I'm going to focus on these two sides, which are the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. So again, I have to ask myself, which trigonometric function relates the, the angle to its adjacent and adjacent side and hypotenuse, and that of course is going to be cosine. So we're going to use that one. So that means the relationship we're using here is the cosine of x is equal to, excuse me, I meant to say 44 degrees. Let's go ahead and fix that. So the cosine of 44 degrees is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So that's going to be x divided by 16. Again, I'm going to turn this into a proportion. And I'm going to cross multiply. So now we have x equals 16 times the cosine of 44 degrees. And if I plug that into my calculator, I'm going to go ahead and just use this one because this is the one we have to use in class. We're going to type in 16, oh, sorry, I'm doing it the other way. I'm going to type in 44, hit cosine, and then I'm going to multiply that by 16. So there's my final answer, and I'll do that again. So 44 cosine times 16 degrees. And I hit enter, and if I round that to one decimal place, that's going to be 11.5. So that's my approximate answer. Okay. And let's do one more here. Um, let's do this one right here. All right, so we have one more triangle here. Let's go ahead and label our sides. Um, let's go to a different color here, this pink. So if I draw a line straight out from my angle, the side that it hits is, of course, the opposite side of my triangle. The side that's touching that angle that makes up the other part of the right angle has to be the adjacent side. So these will always be the legs of the right triangle, meaning the two sides that form that 90 degree angle. And then of course the side that is completely opposite those two has to be the hypotenuse. So they don't give us anything to work with in terms of the um, opposite side, 
So again, we're going to be looking at the adjacent side and the hypotenuse, which is cosine. So we're going to go ahead and set up our equation. So this time, notice that the variable is the hypotenuse, so the variable will be in a different spot from our last example. Um, for our last example, the variable was where the adjacent side was. Now, even though we're still using cosine, the variable's in a different spot, so it will be different when we plug it in. So that means that the cosine of 75 degrees is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, which in this case is 16, divided by x. So there's my equation. And now I'm going to go ahead and solve. So this is what I'm going to get. I'll get 16 is equal to, and it doesn't matter which side you put which thing. I could put 16 on the right, x times cosine time, uh, cosine of 75 on the left, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm just doing it this way. So this would be x times the cosine of 75 degrees. And again, remember that this is a number. Uh, cosine of 75 is just a constant, like 3 or 5 or 2 or something like that. So if we're multiplying x by the cosine of 75 and we want to undo that, then we're going to just divide by that number. So this is just a number, and so you should treat it like a number. You can add, subtract, multiply, and divide with it. So we're going to divide both sides by the cosine of 75 degrees. So those reduce, and we're left with x equals 16 divided by the cosine of 75. And of course, if we want to approximate that, so that's our exact answer. And if we wanted to approximate that using our calculator, I'm going to type in 16 divided by 75 cosine, and then hit enter. And there is my answer there. So the difference between these two uh, calculators Again, these type of calculators, you can just type it in as you see it. So if I were to type in this problem, I could just type in 16 divided by cosine of 75. So they're, like I said, they're a little more user friendly, so I just type it in the way it is in my paper and hit enter and there's my answer. Uh, for these calculators, you've got to put the angle in and then hit the trig function that goes along with it. So again, the one we just did was 16 divided by 75 and then we hit the cosine button and then hit enter. And there is our final answer right there, which is going to be 61.8 units. So I'm going to write that on my paper. So again, if we take a quick look at the problems that we did today, um, always start by labeling, labeling your angles. See which two sides they give you um, and uh, with respect to the angle, and then you just have to choose the right trig function from there. So this one we had to use tangent because we had the opposite side and the adjacent side with our angle. Here we used cosine because they gave us the adjacent and the hypotenuse. Here we used sine because they gave us the opposite side and the hypotenuse. And on the one we did, just did, this was cosine again. And here they gave us the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. So that's why we used cosine. From there, just turn into proportion, cross-multiply, and solve. I hope this helps you guys. Um, happy studying.